Am I good enough? Pretty enough? Will anyone want me? Am I skinny enough? Is someone capable of loving me? Am I just a body? Will they swipe right? Why am I not getting any matches? You're worthless. We have all been consumed by our own thoughts, feeling like our mind was stuck in this never-ending loop of sorrow. Mental health is a daily struggle that many people battle with and try to stay grounded. Today, most of our despondency stems from the use of social media and unrealistic expectations rooted in our brains. We see women and men with perfect hair, skin, and bodies and often compare ourselves with them. But what we see is the filtered version of themselves. How do you use Tinder? Yes. For about how long? Uh, about three hours. How do you use Tinder? Yes. For about how long? I've uh, used Tinder for about, uh, on and off, for about five years now, uh, since my last relationship, like real relationship ended. Have you used Tinder? Yeah, I have. Still do. For about how long? Uh, like two years. With technology being as big as it is nowadays, we have dating at our fingertips. One swipe and you could meet the one. But when could that be? The possibility of who you can meet online is endless, leaving us addicted to checking the apps. The first thing we do when we wake up is check our phones, whether it be to check Tinder or just to log into the social world. Due to cultural flows, online dating has become the new norm for our society. The convenience of dating apps such as Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge has made dating easier, but at what cost? From a psychological perspective, online dating has been said to cause depression. With one survey, 49% of users with pre-existing mental illnesses reported depressive symptoms triggered by online dating. Even those without pre-existing mental illnesses, apps like these can still cause negative effects. Uh, do you think these apps could have negative effects on you? Me, personally, um, yes and no. The way that it's like set up is very, like, it's very basic and um, it's very, like, uh, like superficial in a kind of sense because it's like it almost like you know appeals to like this animalistic instinct like ah oh, pretty pretty not pretty like people don't take the time to like you know like read like um the descriptions it's just based off of like first impressions like window shopping you know they don't want to get to know the person exactly from your experience of using Tinder, have you gone through any emotional changes, depression, self-esteem issues, body issues? It's more of a self-esteem thing. I mean, and I don't want to have it be that because I, I'm, you know, over time I've, you know, gotten enough, I've gathered enough, uh, <clears throat> I've gathered enough uh, confidence in myself to know that, you know, it, what, what's inside is that matters. And, uh, but I have made some changes. Um, Partially based off of, you know, my experience on Tinder, but also at the same time, just because, like, I want to make changes in my life, like, you know, I've started wearing my hair differently, and I started, you know, buying new clothes, and uh, trying to, you know, fit more in style, rather than having, like, a shirt that doesn't even go with itself, you know? Poor body image is another psychological effect of these sites. They're mainly based on physical appearance, and the first thing you see when you open Tinder, Hinge, or Bumble is the person's face or body. I conducted a survey asking college students what their experience was like on Tinder, and here are some of the things they said. I think online dating is a product of our society. We value looks and being perfect. That's why online dating capitalizes on it. It also reinforces image-based judgments. If you have body image issues or eating disorders, it's toxic for you and will make it worse. It made me hate the way I look and just made my negative thoughts worse because of how many people matched or did not match with me. I'm sexualized constantly and that's why I don't use them anymore. A 2016 study found that Tinder users had reported lower levels of self-esteem, expressing dissatisfaction with their physical appearance and loathing of their body image. From a sociological perspective, online dating has changed the culture of finding love significantly. How is online dating viewed today in terms of paving the way for a new cultural norm? Uh, I feel like it's already paved that way. Um, I believe that we've already moved into it. Um, dating how it is now is not like dating how it was. Um, even 10, 15 
20 years ago. Um, I feel like it's already paved the way for this culture and it can also move it towards um, of even maybe more toxic or it can be more friendly. It just depends on, you know, how it's being used, like what type. Um, there are a lot of apps out there that are starting to get more specific um, on what, but again, some people might take advantage of um, what those apps are asking for in order just to get what they want rather than find a mutual or, you know, actually find what, like actually do what they think they need to do to yeah get what they want but um i believe that we are already in that culture and it's just like it's just gonna keep shifting like we're in the culture and it's just gonna keep evolving so um when i you know i i didn't just change like my appearance and my um like the way i dress just for tinder i changed it because i wanted to be those changes on in in, out, in the world outside of online dating do you think that's because you wanted people to perceive you that way or did you want to well that but also i just want i took a look at myself and i'm like that's how i'm wearing my hair that's how i'm really like you know dressing up you know like i, I wanted to you know see what other people were doing and i wanted that i wanted to i wanted to fit in a little bit better while also you know i wanted i also i always want to be myself but like how i dress how i act how i you know how I present myself is I, I want to make sure, you know, I'm not just some sort of troll looking dude who's just kind of shambling around in like mismatched clothes. Compared to traditional dating, do you think Tinder has made dating better or worse? I would say it's made it worse um, because I don't think one person is capable, at least in the short term, to make you feel as good as, you know, hundreds of people liking you um, online. In your words, how do you think online dating has affected society? I would say that online dating has affected society um, just to be more bold, um, but also vulgar with how you say things as well. Um, and what you say, um, how you're perceived. Um, I also believe that, you know, there are a lot of desensitive things that are said also as well. Like it just turns everybody into one thing. Um, you just more like you're doing it's just to get, you know, attention or more is to do what you want rather than um, saying like just being you, like having your personality shine out. So, um, yeah, I definitely believe that everything's starting to look the same and originality is starting to fade away. Charles Cooley coined the looking glass theory, which explains our perception of self in society. It raises questions about identity and socialization in the digital age, as well as the changing landscape of individuals. A looking glass self refers to the way in which individuals construct their sense of self by evaluating themselves alongside how others perceive them. Using social interactions as a mirror, people measure their self-worth, values, and behaviors based on the judgments they receive from others. In Self, Symbols, and Society, Cooley argues that self-concepts are constructed within social settings, not in isolation, and thus society and individuals are related rather than discrete entities. This theory can be applied in the social media realm as well because we see influencers or models online getting praised. People want to be them or be with them. We take this in and change ourselves to how we think people want to see us because we think that if we look like those models, our worth will be more. If we want to use these apps for the long run, we need to be made aware of the effects that they can have on you. Be sure that you are in a good mental space, make a time limit to be away from social media, and set healthy boundaries for yourself. At the end of it all, with or without social validation, you are still worth it.